There are all kinds of ways that life as we know it could come to an end. We could get hit by a meteor. We could blow ourselves up in a nuclear war. We've got super volcanoes, deadly solar flares, out of control nanobots, geomagnetic reversal, alien invasions, zombie apocalypse. Some are more likely than others. That's why some people are saying that what humanity really needs is not a backup plan, but a backup planet. Just one problem. There's only one planet we know of that can sustain human life and we're on it. But what if we could just find another world and spruce things up so we can use it as a backup? You know, in case we wreck this one. We've looked around our neighborhood pretty thoroughly at this point, and nothing nearby is gonna cut it. Everywhere else is either too hot, like Venus, too cold, like Mars, too hot and too cold, like Mercury, and the rest are too gassy, like Uranus, and Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune. And even if they were the right temperature, none of these other planets have an atmosphere that comes anywhere close to what we have here on Earth. All these other planets, they want to kill you. If humans are ever going to thrive as a multi-planet species, that needs to change. We're going to need to make those hostile environments a lot more habitable and more like Earth. It's what scientists like to call terraforming. Thanks to roughly four billion years of natural selection, humans are fine-tuned for living on Earth. But the reality is, life is fragile, and we need things to be just right in order to survive. Earth exists in the so-called Goldilocks zone, with narrow conditions that all depend on each other to keep life on this planet viable, namely liquid water and consistent temperatures. Hey Darian, are you free to explain what exactly makes Earth the perfect place for us to thrive? I thought you'd never ask, Elliot. First, there's gravity. Many astronauts have spent months in space, but weightlessness seriously weakens their bones and muscles. In fact, living in zero-g messes up the immune system, damages vision, and even changes the shape of the heart. If humans are going to live permanently in space, we can't just float around. On Earth, falling objects accelerate at about 10 meters per second every second. Now, we don't know how much or how little that number can change before it starts to mess with our bodies. And perhaps more importantly, you need gravity to hold your atmosphere. Gravity gives you the second thing humans need to live, air pressure. If you're thrown out of an airlock into space without a spacesuit, you wouldn't die from freezing or asphyxiation. You'd die from the lack of air pressure. At sea level, the air pressure is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. The highest permanent human settlement, which is a town in Peru, has about half that. So third, you need the right mix of gases in your atmosphere. The air on Earth is about 21% oxygen, and anything below 11%, you'll pass out. You can lower the air pressure and increase the oxygen, but anything above 30%, and it becomes a serious fire hazard. At standard air pressure, OSHA recommends oxygen levels between 19.5% and 23.5%. You also need something that can trap heat. There are a lot of greenhouse gases, but carbon dioxide is a good choice because plants can use it. But some studies show that having too much of it in the air can harm our ability to think. Carbon dioxide levels are rising on Earth. But don't worry, we probably have another few decades before it'll start to make everyone dumber. Which brings us to the fourth thing that keeps us alive, temperature. Humans are most comfortable between 40 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We can go a little higher as long as we keep the humidity down. Number five, water. <sighs> now that's some good water. Once you get the temperature and air pressure right, you can have some liquid water. According to the World Health Organization, the who? We need between about 13 and 26 gallons per person per day for drinking and basic sanitation. But we also need to eat. So what is that, six? They also say that the average person consumes about 3,000 calories per day. And finally, number seven, we need protection from radiation. Space is full of radiation. Some of it comes from our sun and some of it comes from beyond our solar system. Our atmosphere blocks some of it, but we also get help from Earth's magnetic field, which deflects a lot of the radiation. 
Radiation is measured in millisieverts. An average person on Earth receives about 6.2 millisieverts of radiation per year from natural sources. An astronaut traveling beyond Earth's magnetic field gets about 600 millisieverts of radiation. That's about 6,000 chest x-rays. Holy cow. OSHA recommends no more than 50 millisieverts per year. Earth's magnetic field also protects our atmosphere. Without it, solar wind would simply blow it away into space. There may be other requirements for human habitability that we don't know about, but these are the essentials. If we're going to terraform a planet, we're going to need to nail these seven things. And humanity hasn't had a really good track record trying to recreate what nature has done. Tell them about the biosphere, E. Back in the 1990s, scientists actually tried something like this. Think of it as terraforming on easy mode. Biosphere 2 began as a collaboration between a Texas oil millionaire and an advisor to a traveling theater troupe. The idea was to create a sealed, self-sustaining ecosystem about 30 miles outside Tucson, Arizona. Inside the giant transparent structure, they had a rainforest, a desert, a coral reef, and eight people who were sealed in there with about 3,800 different species of plants and animals for two years. But as the months were on, the whole ecosystem started going haywire. The researchers were starting to go hungry. Crops failed as hummingbirds and honeybees went extinct and the population of mites and worms ballooned. A bacterial bloom in the soil started consuming the oxygen, which dropped by 15%. After a year and a half, two of the researchers escaped and then came back to smash the ventilation system. They were arrested. Steve Bannon took over and fired everyone, and there was a movie about it, starring Pauly Shore and Stephen Baldwin. Biosphere 2 wasn't a complete disaster, though. It produced a fascinating scientific study, namely that we haven't figured out how ecosystems work. But totally understanding ecosystems hasn't stopped certain visionaries from thinking big. For years now, Elon Musk has been the biggest advocate for terraforming. His planet of choice? Mars. And while Musk does a great job of describing the beauty of Mars's blue dawn, red daytime sky, and blue dusk, the opposite of the dawn, daytime, and dusk skies we've grown accustomed to here on Earth, there's still a lot left to figure out before we're ready to start sending picturesque Martian postcards back. Mars is probably the second most habitable planet in our solar system next to Earth, but that's not saying much. Its gravity is about a third that of Earth. Its air pressure at the surface is just 1% of Earth's, meaning it's basically a vacuum. What little air there is is almost entirely carbon dioxide. There's practically no oxygen. The average temperature is 81 degrees below zero. Fahrenheit, if that matters. But there is plenty of water at the ice caps, according to radar and orbiter data. Enough to drown the entire planet in more than 100 feet if you can melt it. Unfortunately, the Martian surface is also highly toxic. It's filled with a chemical called perchlorate. If we wanted to grow any crops, we would also have to clean the soil. And finally, unlike Earth, Mars doesn't have much of a magnetic field. Anyone living there would be bombarded with deadly radiation 24-7. Its lack of a magnetic field is how scientists believe it lost its atmosphere. Even if we could create an atmosphere on Mars, it wouldn't stick around for too long. NASA's MAVEN orbiter is finding that the little bit of atmosphere left is still being blown away. Scientists might be able to solve that by putting a giant electromagnet between Mars and the Sun. But even that wouldn't solve the problem of giving Mars an atmosphere. To make it habitable, we would need to increase the air pressure by a factor of 100 and add a bunch of oxygen. Does Musk have a plan for that? Of course he does. The idea is that by detonating 10,000 thermonuclear weapons over the Martian ice caps, which is two-thirds of the world's entire nuclear arsenal, we could release the carbon dioxide trapped in the ice, increasing air pressure to create a greenhouse effect that would heat up the planet. Believe it or not, there might be some flaws to that plan. A study published in 2018 in Nature Astronomy found that even if you could release all the available carbon dioxide, it would only triple the air pressure and raise the temperature by 18 degrees. While getting rid of a bunch of nuclear weapons doesn't sound like a bad idea, the cost and effort doesn't make sense when you stop and think that Mars would still be very, very far away from sweater weather. And officially, NASA says that terraforming Mars is impossible with current technology. But even if it were, would it be worth it? Musk estimates that the cost of establishing a city of 1 million people on Mars would cost between 100 billion and 10 trillion dollars. 
that's not for terraforming Mars, just setting up a city there for a million people. 100 billion to 10 trillion for a million people. By comparison, a study published last year in Nature Communications found that the costs of not addressing climate change by the end of the century would cost between $150 trillion to $792 trillion by 2100. The fact is, we are living on the one and only planet that is suitable for human life. So while you may not be jumping at the chance to make Mars your new home, terraforming research can help here at home too. That's because creating a life-sustaining ecosystem in a hostile environment is exactly the type of research we'll need to face climate change on this planet in the coming years. Just with a much shorter trip, and a lot less nuking the atmosphere. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel right now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any content. And look out for Curiosity Stream on social media. Links in the description.